Hey now, you surprised me. You came into my home without me even hearing you coming in. Welcome to Fitz's Electric Bar. Fitz here and uh, doing another um, uh, video about releases, new stuff that uh, I've been listening to. And again, when I say new, some of it may be re-released or just new to me. And um, it's stuff mostly that's come into my house in the last four to eight weeks or something. And so I just thought I would share with you. So... Um, one of them, I heard about this through Rev, Reverend Rock and Roland, and um, this is the Natural Information Society. Um, don't know anything about these guys, but I was intrigued by his description and started listening to them in, on the streaming services. And what an amazing cover, but that's not why I bought it. Visually really stunning. Um, I don't know how to describe this really. There are a lot of different artists on this. And so, um, but uh, it's got a um, very esoteric kind of quality, a little bit jazzy, a little bit uh, avant-garde, but not um, too much in your face. Anyways, this is still early days, but this is an album that I'm really looking forward to listening to. Uh, I have a feeling it's going to reveal some nice little uh, tidbits and over time will be something that I'll really quite enjoy natural information society um in a different kind of camp this is something i had on cd it's always interesting when you know you decide you want to get a, a cd on vinyl um and this is uh cassandra wilson <clears throat> late till dawn um i really like cassandra wilson great jazz vocalist kind of middle of the road jazz like um and um, she does, in particular off of this, a, uh, a killer version of Van Morrison's Tupelo Honey, which I really love. This is a really nice record. Again, something you would probably enjoy hearing in the evening if you want something kind of laid back. Double record, Cassandra Wilson. Sorry, got some flare of light there. I tried to set this light up so that I would have like a halo above me, but it was going to take up too much work. So I trying to hide it with my big head. Um, got this a little while ago, but uh, you know what I've always really enjoyed is uh, that reminds me of my childhood is Dancing in the Moonlight. I don't know if that's a typical Thin Lizzy song. It's a pretty catchy tune. And I saw this as a used record. And so I got this Bad Reputation Thin Lizzy. Haven't really listened to it a lot, but I do really enjoy that song, and we'll dive deeper into this over time, I'm sure. Another one, I, I, I question whether I should have got this, because I've got an original copy of Patti Smith's Horses, but um, this is a Speaker's Corner, um, I believe, Speaker's Corner release, and, you know, I was so impressed with the Lou Reed um, Transformer release that I got. The production on that, the sound on that record is so good. So I got this and um, it does it does sound better. Um, I don't know if it's a huge difference, um, but I don't know. I love this record. It's such a seminal record. And so I ended up getting a copy of that. One of the original jazz uh, classics that I decided to buy is Thelonious Monk and John Coltrane. So these re-releases are really um, interesting and purchased that. I uh, haven't really given it much of a listen yet, so I'm looking forward to that. This is a record that when I lived in Japan in the early 90s that really grabbed me was Jazz Mataz. So Guru from Gangstar, uh, Don Cherry's on this record, a whole bunch of other people, Roy Ayers is on Vibes. Um, a really uh, interesting kind of meld of hip hop and jazz music um, and sampled music, I guess, as well. And um, yeah, I've got the one, two, and three Jazzamataz, like the three releases on CD, and I wanted to have this on vinyl. And um, so here we go. Jazzamataz. Another record that I really like, I don't think I ever owned it even on CD, but to Alabama Shakes, Sound and Color. Uh, this is a record that I think holds up really, really well. I mean, this was released back in uh, 2015, so eight years ago. I guess we're not talking about the deep, dark, <laughs> deep, dark uh, Middle Ages. But um, uh, uh, Brittany, what's her name? The lead singer, her voice is incredible. And uh, there's a kind of a, reminds me a little bit of my morning jacket um, with female vocals, but there is a uh, kind of a, an edginess 
um, to it. Uh, it's kind of soulful rock, um, but definitely got a, an edge, which I really like. So Alabama Shakes sound and color. Recent purchase, haven't really dug deep into that just yet. I've gone through a Gene Clark uh, obsession. Um, Clark and Dillard's um, record, uh, was it the incredible whatever? I can't remember that, but with the sidecar on the motorcycle is a record that I, I just love. Uh, Gene Clark compilation that I've got um, that I, I've been listening to quite a bit. And uh, this one here is, um, what is this one called? White Light. Um, and it's got Spanish guitar, which Dylan said was one of the greatest songs ever written. And it is great. They do also, he covers Tears of Rage. Um, really one of the great singer-songwriters, and I don't think he's ever got his due. And the um, the, the record that I think, um, on CD anyways, that I got into was um, no other. Um, and that's become a massive cult classic. And he's just one of those artists that sadly um, never really got his due. And um, uh, I think he's left a legacy of great music. He died, you know, I think way too young. And uh, Gene Clark, somebody I think worth digging into. It's interesting how so many people are such Graham Parsons fans, and I am as well. Uh, I think Gene Clark uh, should be at that same level of reverence. Uh, to me, I was just uh, thinking through, I just finished reading White Bicycles, uh, Joe Boyd's book. And uh, wow, what a great read uh, about late sort of mid to late 60s England and primarily, you know, and his involvement with the club, the nightclub UFO, and then also um, producing records by Fairport Convention, Sandy Denny, incredible string band. But if you are ever interested in getting a really great snapshot of what it was like in, I guess, Swinging London. And um, it starts with his involvement with the um, Newport Folk Festival. And he was involved and right in the middle of the whole scene when Bob Dylan went electric. And so he's got his take on that. Apparently Pete Seeger didn't really, uh, wasn't really looking to take an ax to the to the rec to the cables during uh, Bob Dylan's uh, recording. But White Bicycles, uh, Super interesting uh, book. It's just so well written. Sometimes when I, I read these books, music books, um, you know, th these are people who are at uh, a time when things were really exciting in terms of music, in terms of songwriting, in terms of community, in terms of uh, blossoming type of music, you know, in the 60s and 70s that was so um, fantastic and the future seems so bright. But if it's not really well written, those anecdotes written, those anecdotes are really kind of, they fall flat. And um, some people, I'm not so keen on, Bo or on Neil Young's uh, writings. Bob Dylan's Chronicles is fantastic. I've mentioned Robbie Robertson's testimony is really good. Often um, the really interesting stuff is written by people who aren't necessarily the artists themselves. And in fact, the artists probably have ghostwriters in many cases, but I, I think those people wrote their own. But um, White Bicycles, Joe Boyd, uh, highly recommend it. Another one I've got, virtually everything Nico Case ever did on CD, but I didn't have any vinyl. And um, so this is a Greatest Hits. And um, God, I love her voice. It's just... It feels like it's from another time and there's nobody who sings like uh, like Nico Case. I've got the good fortune of having seen her play live quite a few times. Saw her with Nick Cave. They sang together as well, but, you know, they both played separate sets. Uh, really, really good. And now the record that probably I listened to, I bought this about two or three weeks ago. And I was putting it on every day, and I just love this record. I'd heard some others in the vinyl community talk about it. I think I listened to a song or two on the streaming services and kind of thought, ah, it sounds a little dull. And um, But then it started to grow on me. This is one of those records that has tremendous tone and a really great vibe. Ace Tone is the name of the band. I don't know if it's Ace Tone or Acetone, to be honest with you, but A-C-E-T-O-N-E. Um, don't think they really ever um, uh, developed a big following. Um, they're, I think, mostly no more. The bass player, I believe, committed suicide, sadly. But this sounds so great. The tone on this is fabulous. 
you just put on a side and you're transported. It's uh, it, it's just fantastic. So I this is really the one that I would say check out. This is an anthology. So you can see uh, 1992 to 2001. I think it includes some tracks from uh, one or two of their uh, releases and also some demos that were found. And again, uh, acetone or acetone, sorry for my ignorance, but uh, this is something else, love this. And finally, in the cheese camp, because you know I like my cheese, my Lee Hazelwood and stuff like that. There's good cheese. This record, I uh, I remember years ago hearing this. This came out when, and uh, don't have a year on this, but um, I'm going to guess this is about 10 or 15 years old. Doesn't matter. Paul Anka, Rock Swings. Um, you would think this won't work, um, that it would only be for people who really like William Shatner releases and that kind of stuff. But it honestly, in many, much of it does work. The The cover of Nirvana's Smells Like Teen Spirit is remarkable. You know, you realize that this song has been written and can be uh, rearranged or performed in a completely different idiom, kind of like big band jazz. And it works. It really does. Um, Love Cats, Wonderwall. Some of it is excessively cheesy and some of it really is good. Um, those are some of the tracks, but Nirvana's uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit is really good. Love Cats is really good. And um, yeah, just needed to own this. <laughs> so that's it for now. Carpe diem. Hope you're having a great day.